Tsar Nicholas II of Russia was famously unliked by Bolshevik revolutionaries in 1918, over a year after he'd abdicated the throne. And given that prior to this, kings that had lost their thrones in times of turbulence didn't exactly have long lifespans, why didn't he try to make his escape and head for safe shores? Why didn't Tsar Nicholas II flee Russia? For context, in 1917 the Russian Empire was fighting through the nightmare that was the First World War and things weren't exactly going well. Russia had suffered millions of casualties, it had lost territory to the Central Powers and on the home front things weren't great either. And when combined with generations of displeasure at the quality of life in Russia, it meant revolution. This first revolution culminated in Nicholas II abdicating the throne and his brother also refusing to take it. This came after a lot of pressure from politicians and after this Nicholas was simply a Russian citizen free to do as he chose. Well, for about two days. You see, Nicholas and his family were arrested shortly after his abdication on the orders of the new government. Its leaders knew that the people of Russia were furious at the former Tsar for his conduct during and prior to the war, and there were concerns that the Romanovs would be killed by a mob unless they were arrested. And so house arrest had to do. So what about simply getting rid of the Tsar and moving him to another country? Well, given the ongoing war, the Entente now had a problem. Britain, France and Italy only cared for one thing keeping Russia in the war and tying up the central powers in the east. And so, they were sure to be friendly with the new government whilst also making it clear they didn't want the Tsar murdered. And there were those in the Russian government from the Socialist Revolutionary Party and the Cadet Party who were worried about monarchists overthrowing the new government to restore the Tsar. As such, there were two options. Try him, imprison him and risk him still being used as a rallying point for monarchists in the country. Or exile him and make him someone else's problem. The government opted for the second one. France didn't want the Romanovs because Nicholas II's wife was German and France was not exactly in a loving German's kind of mood at the moment. Italy couldn't take him because getting him there safely would be too difficult which left only Britain. Which was fortunate because Nicholas's cousin King George V had just offered him asylum in the UK. And so you'd think he'd have simply left Russia and spent the rest of his days in Britain but fun fact, no. You see, very shortly after Britain had made the offer, it unmade it at the behest of the king. George didn't want to abandon his cousin, but across the UK, Nicholas was despised. And with the rising popularity of the Labour Party there, he didn't want to give anti-monarchists anything to use against him. But beyond this, there was also simply the issue of pragmatism. There was simply no way to get him out of the country. Nicholas was being held here, and he would have needed to head to either Arkhangelsk or to the newly independent Finland to get out. The Finnish government didn't want him, and the workers at the docks in Arkhangelsk were overwhelmingly pro-Bolshevik a group of people whom the provisional government needed to placate and avoid a civil war with who also wanted the Tsar tried. And so, getting him out of the country would have been nearly impossible and the downsides of him getting caught would have been too great. And as such, the provisional government took a brave step. They did nothing. And they left Nicholas under house arrest until the Bolsheviks took over, who then, realising a trial would, like, take time or something, just shot him. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Mr Wolf, Sky Chappelle, Adam Stalter, Jordan Longley, Rod D. Martin, Gareth Turner, Wyan Hockey, Jerry Lambdin, Spencer Lightfoot, Corsho Wolf, Boogily Woogily, Marvin Cassow, Winston Kaywood, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Aaron the White, Matthew Shipley, Robert Wetzel, Alex Schwinn, Maggie Pakskowski, The McWhopper, Anthony Beckett, Copper Tone, Spinning Three Plates, Charles I, Ben Ivinson, Scottish Trekkie and Words About Books podcast.